Right, hello, greetings. So we're in the first of the muses when you come into the museum. And this muse is very important. Um, I mean, all nine are, but this one is the muse of science, the sciences. She's called Urania, which in Greek meant the starry night sky. And she's the daughter of Zeus and Mimosony. Mimosonies is the goddess of memory in the Greek um, religious and cultural system. And so this is a beautiful conceit that Zeus, the god of light, has a wisdom affair, as I call it, with the goddess of memory, who represents the deep unconscious, the dark of the memory. And together they produce these nine goddesses, because Urania is a goddess, as are they all. And it was the heart of the Pythagorean religious system, what I'm about to explain to you about the muses. Pythagoras worshipped the nine muses. They were known at Delphi. They were known by Orpheus before Pythagoras. Pythagoras spent time travelling in Egypt, where he studied science and geometry and mathematics and music. And he spent time studying in Babylon, in Mesopotamia, and in Phoenicia, because he was half Phoenician. So this idea of the nine muses being at the root of all learning was an Orphic idea. The Greeks had a tradition called the Orphic Mysteries, which we were initiated into. And Pythagoras carried that forward in his lifetime. And then Plato carried that forward in his lifetime. And when Plato founded the academy in the forest groves outside Athens, dedicated to Academus, which is where the word academic comes from, he built a temple to the nine muses. So all the academics that came to study with Plato were able to go in there and sit and pray and meditate, and there were statues of the nine muses to remind them. So, um, I'm just continuing in that lineage, that tradition, by having this Museum of the Muses. Urania is the muse, therefore, of the, the natural sciences. All books to do with biology, chemistry, mathematics, uh, geometry, algebra, physics, cosmology, astronomy, um, and also geography, which, which counts as a science in, in this classification. Um, they're all here, geology and so on. So I'm fascinated by the sciences. I've worked, I've taught courses on the history of medicine at the University of Oxford. And there's a lot of books on medicine here. The history of medicine is one of my specialities. Um, <clears throat> and the history of medicine and religion is the course I taught for Oxford. Also, you find books in here on ecology. I run the Global Green University from here. This is like the hub of the, the admin office for our work. And I think scientists are really important. I love science. But I think they need to up-level their skills so that they look at the whole of things back in the wisdom perspective that Pythagoras, Plato and Orpheus taught. Science has become too fractured into little bits. We can't save the world if we're all like digging our own little molehill. We have, to, we have to ascend the mountain of paradise together, to use Dante's image. Um, you also, in this room, you'll find books about peace scientists. So I worked with Professor Tom Kibble of Imperial College at the University of London, who appointed me as one of the people to my job, um, <clears throat> along with several Nobel Prize winners for science. Tom Kibble was a physicist and a great peace worker. He felt science should work for peace, as I do. And he coordinated and founded Scientists for Peace and Global Responsibility. He asked me, what should we call this group, Thomas? We, we are not just for peace, we're also for planetary, um, you know, climate change, defence against ecological destruction. So I gave him that term, Scientists for Peace and Global Responsibility. And it's still going. <clears throat> it is the body that actively coordinates the work of scientists around the planet. Also, Joseph Rotblatt and the Pugwash team which Einstein set up. And if you look carefully, you'll see there's an archive of Einstein's work, which is actually in the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, um, <clears throat> which I visited, because Einstein left his papers and documents to the Hebrew University. He was offered the chance to become president of Israel, in fact, but he said, no, you know, I, I don't want to be like a normal president. I'm an intellectual. That's my position. Um, and my parents visited Princeton when he was in residence. I always said to them, why didn't you knock on the door? I'm sure he would have given them a cup of tea because he was a, 
and people think are like they were. Anyway, so this is a room <clears throat> in which many mysteries are documents, paperwork to do with the Green University and the work of scientists for peace all around the world. And we work under the guidance of Urania, the muse of science. So have a little look around. Thank you. And I will add, of course, that, um, that we also have books here on informatics and engineering and technology and um, digital technology. So I'm a great believer in computers. This is where the main computers are of the Institute. But I think that <coughs> digital information technology should be used for peace. I'm a great opponent of information warfare and cyber warfare. So I'm, you know, I've called for a cyber peace treaty among the nations, so that our computer technologists don't, don't send out false information to each other like a war game. Um, and there's a book here that's called Surveillance Capitalism by an American academic, she's a social scientist, talking about the new age we're in, surveillance capitalism. You know, Facebook and things like this, although they're great and I use them, they, their algorithms are destructive because they benefit from polarization and from, you know, seeding chaos and conflict around the world. So, you know, we're on to them, and um, there was a meeting just recently, I believe, in, in actually the American Supreme Court that Facebook should hand over their algorithms um, so that we can see actually what's going on here. Why are they creating division, um, you know, just to boost profits? That's wrong. So we're still living in the Wild West when it comes to information technology. And um, I'm a great believer in, in, in using our intelligence and our science for peace. Um, okay, so that's this from Urania. Thank you for joining me.